Alright. Y'all hear me? Yeah, I got you. Beat goes kind of hard. Oh. Warning, if you are faint of heart or easily offended, this show is not for you. I don't give a damn about what you're saying, bitch, you in the way. Close case, my nigga beat the charge just like yesterday. In your face, I'ma go hard and make sure you see the cake. Keep the pace, ain't no one fucking with me, it's not a race. Doing the shit that I want, I'm never gonna stop, I'm never gonna give in. Making my way to the top, I told you to ride, I told you to get in. Now you can't eat out my pot, it's filled to the top, and I'm about to dig in. You say I was doing... Welcome to the Go Rogue Podcast. All right, tonight we have Matt going on, from Venom Line Pocket Bullies. What's going on, brother? Not a whole lot, man. Just uh, chat. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Trying to yeah, you were telling me this is this is your first ever live broadcast. I've never, yeah, I, I've never gone live. Uh, never done live broadcast. I'm uh, I'm new to that, man. Cool. Well, I'm glad we could get you in here and get uh, get people the opportunity to get in and throw some questions at you. Of course, I'll, I'll throw some questions at you, too. Cool. And uh, let me see here. Make sure we got the chat going. Yep. We got a few people jumped in there already. Welcome, we got people. Welcome. Vanessa. She said she wasn't going to make it, but there she is. There she is. Hey, Vanessa. How you doing? Good. All right, so uh, tell me a little bit about how you got started in the American Bully. Because I know previously you were in Texas. When I found you, you were... Yeah, ori I think originally just... uh, from Texas, uh, outside of Houston. Um, okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so how I got involved with the, uh, with the breed was, uh, I mean, kind of by accident, to be honest with you. Uh, I've always had uh, dogs growing up. Uh, I love the pit bull breed. That's kind of where uh, I came from. My first uh, pit bull, and I'll say pit bull in quotations because, because this dog was uh, was a mix. And uh, we still don't know exactly what he was. His name was Tyson. And this was like the, just the, the best dog ever. I'm sorry? Yeah. sorry. You're here. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the dog Tyson that I had, uh, I ended up actually getting him as a freshman in college at Texas tech. Uh, I got him for free from a girl that I was dating at the time. And, uh, I kept this puppy in the dorms, um, for the second semester until I got kicked out, uh, for having a dog, but this dog, uh, because, you know, we were doing our thing and, and partying and not really being responsible, letting the dog out as much as we should, this dog would go use the restroom at the community like urinals in the dorms, walk back to our room and it just like it tripped people out. So I loved this dog and uh, he was the first Tyson I ever had. And it, we have a Tyson the second. Uh, he's a, a, sta a big standard bully. He's 11 years old. Uh, that's who he's named after. Uh, but I had this dog. It was uh, we don't know. We, we think it was Pitbull. Uh, possibly lab in some Rhodesian rich back extend, but mm. and uh, I had him uh, and one of my buddies in college uh, he had watched Tyson and I told him I would watch his dog and he had uh, he had a pit bull this was one of the first Gotti line dogs I think it was off of Leon's Moo Moo uh, very very beginning Gotti stuff and I I went over to his house to watch his dog and uh, I was scared of this thing, man. I've never seen a pit bull with that big of a head. Uh, I was completely blown away with it. I was nervous around the dog until I realized 
it it got closer and closer and eventually licked me and uh i was sold after that i got into finding out uh i wanted to learn as much as i could about the different uh gaudy line at the time for me was what i was interested in and then i saw these beautiful dogs uh so the gaudy line thing was happening on the west coast uh razor's edge was doing their thing on on the east coast and uh those were just two lines that I followed for years before uh, I ended up getting a first bully. Uh, but that's how I got introduced to it was a roommate in college. And this dog was the most terrifying dog I've ever seen, but it was the sweetest dog. It had the best temperament. And that's, uh, you know, he kind of broke it down. This is a pit bull. It's really a bully. Uh, and I learned about it. And I just, I love, I love that tough look with the massive head. Uh, but the temperament being the exact opposite of that, just being really gentle, uh, loving dogs. Nice. And then, uh, so was, was Venom like your first one that you had purchased? No, no, we were breeding, uh, yo, we were breeding before Venom. Uh, he was the first one actually that, uh, he actually went viral, uh, from a live stream at a show. And at this show, we had two, two pocket champions, um, that we were showing and I thought that everyone was going to want to see them. So, you know, I'm letting my wife know, Hey, if people want to come and take photos with, with these two champions, uh, you know, this is, uh, how you, you shoot it, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, they weren't interested in, th in those dogs. Everyone walked right past them. Like, no, I want to see that one. And I'm like the little guy. And they're like, yeah. And he was only probably around 11 months at that time. Um, hadn't hadn't filled out yet i didn't really know what i had in him i just i i knew that he was not getting any taller and he kept getting wider um and for me he ended up having one of uh, uh my favorite head pieces i just love the head shape um that he throws and uh, it was kind of it kind of took off from there but that's that's how he actually took off was it was a live stream at a show and uh yeah i wasn't even going to bring him to that show because he wasn't really anything to me, really impressive at that time. And right. he started getting, I, I started seeing, okay, maybe I have something special here around 14, 15 months when he hadn't grown an inch and everything was just getting wider. Um, just a really compact, uh, muscular little dog. And, you know, he ended up becoming my best friend. And, you know, we did all this together, all the all the road trips, different shows, you know, traveling. Yeah. He, he was always right there, you know, riding shotgun. That was, you know, that, that was my dude, man. Right. And yet, so when, when would you say he kind of hit his, his mark, like when he was filled out and cause you know, some dogs show out early, some take a little bit longer. Yeah. Just seems to be, you know, how it is depending on, you know, the bloodline. Uh, I would say with, with him around a little over two years, was when he he really filled out um but you know i got his daughter uh uh lil ting she's a champion and two times venom and uh want to keep her at the beginning because uh she wasn't she didn't have enough type for me and you know she ended up maturing up until three years old became a 82 pound female with, as close to perfect confirmation with that mass on a female um at that height so you never really know um with venom specifically a little over two years yeah i think it's pretty consistent i think kimber was about the same way you know about at about a one year range for you guys that don't know i have a venom daughter um that i bought from matt and, and uh, nate and but, nate. yeah but um yeah at about a year you could see okay something's there you know it's coming but it was about two years it was just like Okay, there she is. Like she's really starting to to put it on. So she, yeah, she ended up having uh, how how did her uh, head turn out? She ended up having a big ass head. She does. She does. She has a decent sized head. Um, good shoulders, good rear. Like really nothing to complain about. Um, you know we're always pushing for more. So, but yeah, overall, like the, you, uh, you guys did a phenomenal job with her, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, she's she. Been, uh, she was Venom's first grand champion daughter. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. She, she did really well. In the life, but, uh, no grand champion daughters uh, until uh, Kimber was the first one. I believe there's been one or two more since. 
Uh, but yeah, you, you were the first man. Wow. I did not know that. That's crazy. Yeah. She did really well in a ring. Like we put her in and it just seemed like, you know, every time we put her in the judges loved her. So she jumped, she, you know, she did really well, really quick. She didn't take any time at all. Yeah, no, I, I was watching, man. I was watching and rooting for you guys, man. She was killing it. Chicken and uh, there's a ton of messages, just a ton of people just saying what's up and hello. And okay, some people tagging some other people. All right, so you got Venom and you start like building your program. And one thing, like I told you before we went live, that I was really impressed with about you and your program was your ability to market and. I don't even know if you realize that as much, but you know, when we started doing our homework for an American bully and my wife said, Oh yeah, let's get an American bully. I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my homework. You know, I'm a computer guy. So I get on the computer, I'm searching the internet and there was just no avoiding it. I don't care where you went. If you search for a dog, it venom was popping up. He was everywhere. You had, um, there was these blog posts that you did all the time on, I can't remember the name of that. Uh, service, but you did a bunch of blog posts and the website, and it just seemed like you were constantly putting American Bully and Venom out there, and then yeah, just yeah. The, the search engines were responding. Um, now, did you have any previous knowledge of how to do that, or was that just part of your process? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, uh, I, I came from a, uh, a finance background bef before I got into dogs, and then when I started to get into dogs, I was using all of the money that uh, my salary from uh, my job in finance, I, I was a broker, um, uh, series three, series six. Uh, so I did futures and options, uh, eventually opened like a small, uh, firm of, of my own, like a boutique investment firm here. Each and I got burnt out, man. And I always loved the dogs. And, uh, when Venom started to take off, uh, and you know, our, financially things I was making more with uh, the dogs than I was uh, owning a, a, a firm. And I, I did not like uh, the stress of it, waking up early, wearing a suit every day, having to check the stock market. You know, if you made the wrong trade, it's going to be a really stressful day. Some people don't care. They can lose someone a quarter of a million dollars and sleep through the night like a baby. I, I couldn't. If a trade didn't work out, it would weigh on me and... Uh, it just took a toll, man. And I've always loved the dogs. And once I found out that, okay, I could do this full time, uh, I put everything into it, you know, put all my, my chips in. And, uh, that's kind of how I learned to market was not really because I have a background in it. It was more out of necessity, uh, because I was putting everything into the dogs. I didn't have the money to build a website, um, you know, and get the, the dogs and everything that, uh, I wanted for, uh, you know, for at that, that at that time, it was Texas sized bullies mm -hmm. uh, before Venom Line. So uh, everything was going into that. Uh, so I, I had no choice but to you know, make sure that that it worked. Um, and through that, I just I taught myself from watching YouTube videos uh, how to build a website. Um, I built our website and I. Uh, you know, a marketing professional, so I just watch YouTube videos, read books, uh, and you know, try different things out. Nice. Uh, Megaline Bullies wants to know, how did you find and buy Venom? How did I find and buy Venom? I found uh, Venom from uh, George Aguilar at Louis V-Line. Mm -hmm. And how I ended up with, uh, with Venom, I wanted something off of that litter specifically. Um, and starting out, uh, sorry, what was that? I didn't say anything. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, starting off, I was looking at, uh, sons of, I was looking at the sons of Dax. I loved, uh, what Dax was throwing at the time. Uh, and just to, to backtrack a little bit before that, uh, my favorite dog was, uh, Rocky has a hard head out of Mo Betta pits or Mo Betta blues. Um, and it was, uh, one of the guys from outcast, I think his, he ran it for a while and then his brother ran it. Uh, but I saw that dog in Rolling Stone magazine and that was like the dog for me. And after that was when atomic dog released, uh, the, 
the Lucky Luciano uh, issue. And Lucky Luciano, I hadn't seen the colors. I built, you know, I'm the Razor's Edge dogs, but I hadn't seen the color and the build that was coming off of, of Dax. Um, and I fell in love. And uh, out of Dax in particular, I, I really liked certain features of Louis V-Line and Lucky Luciano. I love uh, Lucky Luciano. He's still. Uh, just a really great dog and uh he, he he stayed mobile and athletic for a long time so shout out to to alex ferraro uh you know he's a guy that like you know i was around when you were starting alex was around uh when we were starting and uh, still to this day a guy that that does everything right so <coughs> excuse me shout out to uh, alex ferraro uh, but i was looking specifically at louis v line uh, Louis V and Lucky Luciano were my uh, two particular dogs I liked at that time. Now, I really liked Magoo and some of the other Dax sons. I loved them all. Those were just my personal favorites. And I took uh, uh, certain dogs from, from Louis, Louis V line, some dogs from Lucky line, and you know some, some edge stuff that, that we had. And, uh, yeah, I tried to just keep certain features that, that I wanted. Uh, I love the Louis V line, the light eyes. I love that they keep those light blue eyes, even as adults. Uh, like when I see Ting outside, an all white dog with those light blue eyes, I mean, <laughs> it almost looks like a white walker. Mm -hmm. It's just a really cool look on a dog. So I love that uh, trait from Louis V line. I love they were big bully dogs, uh, but I had a vision to clean up certain areas uh, and concentrate more on show where that wasn't necessarily uh, you know, maybe his focus, um, but shout out to George too, because, uh, without him, I wouldn't have gotten venom. Uh, and, and I appreciate everything, brother. Yeah. So you got him from George and then but that's, uh, that's how I got venom was I harassed George for, for months Yeah. about that specific <laughs> dog. I wanted the short one. I kept on calling him the little guy because he had Louis V. Uh, remember Louis V was still around at this time and he had Lil V and I'm like, mm -hmm bro, what are you, what are you, why are you keeping the little guy? You've already got two of them, you know? And, uh, unfortunately, you know, everything happened with, with Louis V and, uh, you know, that was, that was pretty terrible, but I, I lucked out, um, getting Venom and, and not just that, just, he it, is a really consistent producer. I mean, he's, he stamps his look on, uh, just about anything he touches. Um, and, and he, you know, he's not a show dog. He's, he's not a perfect dog by any means, but, uh, he produces bully ass show dogs uh, and extreme dogs that, uh, you know, may not be show dogs, but he, he produces wow factor and uh, consistently passes on traits that, you know, I'm after. I have a certain look that, you know, we like. And uh, that's how I got uh, Venom was through uh, Louis V line. So shout out again to George. Now, after you got him, um, you said that the first kind of thing that sent him viral was uh, a video from a, from a meet or something. It was a uh, it was a show. I think it was an ABK she, ABKC show. Yes, it was because I had two pocket champions there that I thought everyone was going to want to see, and everyone kind you know they could care less about uh, those two, and they wanted to see see Venom. And, and a guy came up to me and asked if he could do a live video, and I said, sure. You know, I don't care. Uh, and it went viral in Brazil, and that's where he first took off. Was uh, was actually in Brazil. So shout out to uh, anyone from Brazil watching this. Uh, much love. Nice. And uh, at the time, you know, I'm trying to think. At the time, just me doing my homework on the dog, I don't remember seeing a lot of dogs his height. Like he was, he was exceptionally compact for for the time i feel like was there any other dogs like around his size at the time i mean i'm i'm, sh I'm sure there were some you know at that height i didn't see any with at that height with that build and in his in his head uh he had a really nice uh size head for his height um and just you know super compact he just really short back uh one of them um the big dogs around uh, when he was, because we, we shut him down at, at the height of his popularity. We closed him at four and a half. Um, and at that time, uh, you know, the, the other big dogs, you, you know, you had Rocco and 
uh, some of the other ones, uh, but uh, there wasn't a ton of, uh, you know, the shorter real bully dogs like a Venom or like a Golden Child type mm -hmm. build. Uh, you just didn't see as much of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, so I found you. I don't know how long. How old was Venom when when we ran into you guys? How old's Kimber? She is four years old now. So, yeah, he was probably around four years old. Okay. Yeah. And so he was well within his, you know, in his prime, he was getting things going for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was doing his thing. But, yeah, then at some point you hooked up with Nate. Um, yep. And tell me how that kind of worked out. Uh, how I hooked up with, uh, with Nate. <clears throat> I used to always see him. Uh, his best friend lives across the street from me. And I used to always see him coming, you know, in and out when I'm coming in and out. And then I see, then I started seeing him coming in and out with bullies as I'm coming in, in and out with bullies. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Uh, so we ended up, you know, talking one day. I think we were, uh, I was doing a breeding with Chumper, I think, at that time. And uh, I was telling him about Chumper. And uh, Venom was still pretty young at this time because Nate saw him, I think, for the first time, probably at like nine months. He wasn't anything super special at that time. you know dogs and at the time uh, uh i knew what i had in venom uh the next dog for me was, was chumper uh just a dog that carried a, a pocket that carried a ton of mass that could float around the show ring i mean it just uh i, I love chumper anyone who knows me knows uh, i love chumper so shout out to uh andre uh, uh you know chumper should get a lot more love than he does man yeah yeah for sure that was uh and more and more, I did my homework. There were certain dogs that started to stand out. Obviously, Chumper was one of those. Um, so in my particular breeding, which you had plenty of those before that, but just the one I recall was you and Nate kind of uh, co-produced a litter. Mm -hmm. He had a, a lucky daughter. He had a lucky daughter. Yep. And then you yeah. took Venom to that lucky daughter and you had that litter. Yeah, I think and that was actually our, I think that was the first breeding we did together. It was, yeah. When I yeah. talked to, because I didn't know, you know, the weird part is I show up, you know, you know, it was business as usual. So to me, it looked like you guys have been working together forever. I had no idea. No, we we had become time. friends, but uh, we hadn't uh, we hadn't done any business together. Um, we had talked about it, but that was our, I believe, our first breeding together. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out real good, and it kind of it gave me, um, kind of like the experience of what it's like to have to. You know, because we ended up with like fourth pick because so many people jumped on it before we did. So it was kind of nerve wracking. Fourth pick becomes a grand champion. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. You like that. Um, but it was so nerve wracking waiting, you know, because you're like, you'd message us and you'd be like, hey, you wait. I got to let one, two, three pick first, you know. And we had already picked out Kimber. Like we knew she was going to be the one. We were just praying that she'd still be there, you know, when, uh, when it was our turn yeah and lucky enough lucky enough she was you know so that was pretty awesome so uh you know recently obviously everyone knows you know um you know venom had passed away and i you know when you i could tell you know obviously sam is kind of going through the same thing now with grim but when you when he passed away and i saw you kind of were taking some time off i wouldn't see any posts not you know, I reached out to you initially and I was like, hey, I'm going to try to get you on the podcast because I like I know how devastating that can be. And I'm like, maybe I reach out to him, see if he'll come on the podcast or at least like, you know, get to talk and try to get him fired up again because it's, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, but, no, I, I, I checked out uh, for a few months. Uh, you know, you, you do this as long as as I have now going on uh, eight years. Uh, you can get burnt out um, and you will get burnt out several times and you'll have the devastating uh, things happen where, you know, you'll, you'll have the years where everything goes right and uh, you're on top of the world and, uh, you know, maybe even you, you get a little big head. I'm guilty myself. Uh, and, you know, you, you get served a dose of reality yeah. sometimes. Uh, it, it'll humble you. you know, I think. Um, I always tell people, they're like, what's the uh, worst thing that can happen to a new breeder? And I always tell people that. 
success right off the bat, especially for a new breeder. It'll have you thinking you're a lot better than you are. Um, it happened to me. Uh, and you learn things as, as you go along. You learn about the different, you know, bloods and combinations. And, uh, you know, I'm always researching and, and looking to improve. And uh, one of the things I really looked at was uh, how the top horse breeders um, breed their stock. I mean, if you look at how much money's in horses, uh, there's got to be people that know their stuff. And that's where uh, I kind of look to. Uh, I think I I think I interviewed Bashar uh, from Muscle Tone. When I first started Bully King Magazine, and he had mentioned that to me, and that was one thing I started doing some research on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, Bashar for for taking an interview and when I was starting out. And uh, through that, through the magazine and, like, what you're doing now with the podcast, I learned so much because I got to pick, I got to pick the brains of all my favorite breeders. Uh, a lot like what you're doing learned so much through that experience i'm really grateful for for that and uh for all the big time guys when i was starting out that uh you know took those those couple of minutes for me i i do appreciate that yeah it's a good point that you make because um you know you see lots of breeders that kind of hit the ground running and they get a dog and that dog catches fire and they get caught off guard you know they're not ready they don't know how to collect a dog they don't know how to ship they don't know how to do nothing you know, and it takes them time to get caught up because they don't they don't know any of that yeah. stuff that they would normally have the opportunity to learn. Yeah, it's like when you see uh, the post, uh, you know, uh, you know, thank God. The uh, lock ins this month, it's like, bro, a dog can't physically uh, he can't physically do that. Right. So either you're lying about your numbers or or uh, you're going to have some issues on your hand because, I mean, you have 250 people locking in. You don't think there's going to be four of those coming up five, six in one week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, you know, and if you are blessed with that you know, special stuff, you do have it, you know, coming in. You, you do need to be prepared for that before you accept people's, because I see people all the time with these new stud owners, uh, you know, they're getting uh, low counts, dead shipments. Uh, you know, that can happen, uh, but it will happen a lot less with breeders who take the time to, you know, educate themselves and, you know, uh, perfect their craft. Once you, once you have that down, then, uh, you know, you can, you can feel a lot better about the pod. To these new guys, I would say, ship out a couple first, see how it is managing a stud dog, uh, before you have a stud that, you know, has to be shipped out with venom. Uh, I've had it recently with Koopa, you know, too many for them in, in a week. Uh, I mean, we had days where we shipped out, uh, two with venom in the morning and did a live breeding at night and it just got to be, uh, too crazy. And that's when, uh, that's when I shut them down when about four and a half. Yeah. And, no, and that's, and you see, you see that with, uh, stud owners and that was a good move on your part is to sh when it gets to be a bit too much to shut them down for a little while. It's not that you're not breeding them. You're still fulfilling your contracts. You're just not accepting any more yeah. for a while and yeah. giving him the opportunity to catch up. You're making, you're making take customers in front of you before you start bringing in more than you can handle and, you know, having issues. Jeremy Gerritsen, let's see what he said. Did you start early? Uh, Jeremy. We did not start early. Started right on time. Even though we had some technical difficulties, we got them worked out. Yeah, so now you have a new generation, and uh, you have several dogs. Um, so you got Koopa, and you've got um, the Chocolate Boy. I don't know why I never can remember his name. King V. King V. That's right. Yeah, King V. Koopa, King V. Homicide. Yep. Uh, ooh, we got Uno, who's coming up. He just turned a year, so he just opened. Uh I like Uno a lot. He's our upcoming show prospect. Um, so I'm excited to get him in the ring. Now, King V was, uh, he was an outcross to some uh, muscle tone stuff, right? So Venom. Yep. Just he was, uh, King V was Venom to an inbred Casablanca water. Uh, uh, owned by uh, Brandy. Um, so if she's watching this, shout out to Brandy. Uh, that was a good litter. I, uh, at, the, at the time, I think, I don't know if that was right when I, before I closed Venom or I think it was after, I think it was after he was closed. Uh, but I wanted to, 
I wanted to try out some different blood, and I wanted uh, Venom was so dominant in throwing his traits. I wanted to breed to an, a daughter that you know, an, an inbred female off of something I really liked, and uh, I, I really liked Casablanca um, back in the day. So I wanted to see what that would do, and uh, yeah, we got King V out of that. Who's uh, he's about Venom sized, uh, short little guy, super compact. Right. Uh, and then we've got uh, Koopa and Homie, who uh, are the, the big boys. And, and Koopa, uh, he's definitely the most extreme. He's not perfect, uh, but he's inbred. He is really extreme. Uh, and he has uh, features I really like. I mean, he's uh, basically Venom supersized. He sounds more Venom Prime. Yeah, you're cutting out a little bit there every once in a while, but I'm still piecing you together there. Um, so then, so there's King V, and then um, I think I'm pretty sure King V was around when I picked up Kimber. For some reason, I was thinking he was a puppy puppy, like he was very, very young. Uh, no, 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 yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think he was, yeah. Yeah, I think he I was remember. a really cute little puppy, man. Tiny little fella, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, those crazy green eyes, man. He's, he still has them a little bit. They've gotten darker, but yeah, he had really different, different eyes. I'm used to dark dog. Uh, but his were green. It, it was uh, definitely unique. So early on, you actually did, before I, I, I found Can out. Can you hear me? I think we, I think, yeah, I got you. I think we lost him there for a minute. Let's give him a second. He might come back. All right. Let me see here. So while we're waiting on him to come back, let's take a look. Went to homie. Got to connect. There we go. He's back. Back? Yep. You're back. Okay. Drop, dropped out there for a second. Which it happens. It happens. So, uh, homicide, that's a recent pickup. That wasn't, that wasn't too long ago. I remember. Yeah. We've had them for about, I guess about two years now. Is it? Yeah. I guess how time flies. You know what I mean? It seems like it was yeah. yesterday. <laughs> no, I, uh, we loved him. And, uh, you know, we used him, uh, definitely jumpers apart. I loved him as a puppy. Uh, and when I, had the chance to get him, uh, and I called Nate, and he said he was in. It was uh, I've been calling them together, and uh, that, that was uh, that was definitely a, a neat pickup. I love homicide. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now I saw um, wasn't too long ago you had did a post and said something about you might start start coming out to shows again. Uh, yeah, that, I'm coming out. Uh, I'll be showing this year. We were planning on actually coming. Uh, Jeremiah Fry, uh, what's up, buddy? He talked me into. Uh, uh, so I, I rushed uh, I out to Chicago, grabbed Koopa, and had to. Uh, the day I got home, we would have had to maybe not make it on time. But I wanted to go and and meet up with my. He ended up not being able to make it, you know, last minute uh, because of everything that that happened to find out. Uh, but definitely, yeah. One of the things this year, my goal is to uh, to make a lot more shows, man. That's cool. Cool. I'm glad to I'm hopefully see you guys there. I do see Nate every once in a while at a show, especially like Southern shows. I'll see him at a show here and there, but. Uh, no, that's definitely good. So you got some, you going to bring all the boys out or you just, you got some specific like show style dogs you plan on bringing out? Uh, definitely bring out uh, Homie and Koopa. Okay. Uh, those are two dogs. Even though, you know, Homie's getting up there in age, he still looks good. Um, he still looks real good at, at you know, at seven years old, he's, he can hang with a lot of the young bucks. Um, so yeah, Homicide and, and Koopa. Uh, for sure, we want to get out and, and get seen. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of people haven't seen Koopa. Yeah. And that's one of the things I'm excited about was bringing him out to 
because up until uh, he was with, uh, you know, my co-owner, uh, partner of mine, Vic. And uh, uh, now he's, he's back with me full time. And uh, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot more of him. I was promoting just using 16 month old folks up until, uh, you know, I got him two weeks ago. So uh, at, at, at full height, people that have come in. Uh, and it's always the same reaction. It's it's either oh my god or god, you know, D A M. He is massive for a little dog. Um, it, you got to you got to put hands to really appreciate it. But uh, he's definitely extreme for his height. But he's not as tall as some of these these other you know really nice extreme dogs. You know, Koopa's only he's a little under thirteen five. Oh geez. So he's short. Yeah, no doubt. It's funny because his pictures kind of make him look taller. Like you'd look at him, he looks like about a 15 inch dog in the photos. Yeah, until you see him in person, that's what everyone says. They're like, wow. And plus, he's uh, a lot of the, the, the really, you know, extreme dogs. Uh, you know, there's some nice extremes that, you know, like seven. Excellent uh, example of an extreme bully that still fits, you know, the. Still fits within, uh, you know, uh, what the the show crowd wants to see, and also what a judge wants to see. That's mm -hmm. a complete extreme to me. Some there's some really nice dogs now. Um, where Koopa differs is the short back. If right. you were to stack him next to, uh, you know, any of the really nice extreme dogs, and then do a side profile, he's probably half the length. Mm. It's it's a lot of mass on really short, compact frame. I mean, I don't see how you could get more mass on a dog. Uh, you know, I, I got to keep him from getting too big because, you know, he's got not a super long frame. He's got a shorter, more compact frame like Venom. Let me see here. And definitely producing. Someone says definitely producing beautiful. That was Amanda Fern. Oh, what's up, Amanda? Amanda just had a king of litter of twelve. Oh, yikes! So if she has any left, I think they may they may have three or four. They may have three or four left uh, if they're not already gone. But if they're still left, Amanda's litter, um, really nice, uh, super consistent, and she got twelve of them. So I'm a little jealous. Uh, we don't ever seem to get the twelves, but. When it's a customer yeah. of yours, you're you know you're you're thrilled for them. Amanda said five, so I'm assuming she has five left out of the twelve. Uh, five left. Okay. Oh, so there's some, there's some left. Get up, Amanda. Yeah. Snatch one up. If you guys have questions, obviously throw them in the question box, and we'll get them at him. I'm really bad about that. I'll get to talking to somebody, and I'm like, we'll get to your questions, and I never. Sometimes I don't get to them, so I'm gonna try to make a. Yeah. Make an effort to get people questions. Amanda said she has a chunk clone. So, so when King V that was, um, so was that like a pup back deal, or was that one of your like you bred to Venom, and then how did that work? Did you get him? Uh, no, because Venom stud fee was was up point. Thank you. Is that like fifteen or twenty thousand? Uh. Uh, or if he was closed, then it was twenty or twenty-five. Um, in lieu of the the stud, we did a we did a, a litter. Sp I really liked her female. Um, they wanted to use venom. We agreed, uh, and we partnered together, and uh, we split the litter. Oh, well, that is a that, believe it or not, that's not a tactic I've heard of, of before. Yeah, like I've heard definitely like pup backs, but like the litter split, that's a new one. So that worked out good. I remember when he was well, actually. I mean, I starting off. Yeah, okay. starting off. Uh, start, you know, I, I would do a pup back, but, uh, you know, later on, uh, especially with Venom, I wanted to keep him somewhat limited. Uh, and that's another reason we closed him at his popularity is I wanted, uh, I didn't want to just breed him to anything. I wanted the demand. Um, and, you know, we, our dogs are, are something a little bit different. It's, not something that ever has and i wanted to keep it exclusive that you can't have it to limit 
so that he wasn't just bred all the place to where everybody had venom two times venom in the, in their pedigree. I wanted to keep that kind of for uh, us and, and for our customers. And because of that, it, it you know, his pup prodded, you know, going crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a litter split. Uh, yeah. Once, once your stud gets up to 15, 20, 25,000 back is, it, it's just not changed. So, uh, you know, litter split is usually the way to do it. Ron O'Neill posted, he wants to know who is your favorite venom line girl besides Ting? One that you're super proud of how she turned out. Ooh, my favorite. Uh, we're talking about favorite, uh, favorite show dog or favorite, you know, wow factor ex extreme bull because that's the difference. Yeah, let's split it. Let's just do both. But he's asking about females specifically. Females? On on my yard or just off of Venom in general? I think just overall, yeah. He's just females off of Venom that, other than Ting, that uh, that's your favorite. Uh, I really, really love really Ting's litter mate, uh, Vanna White. She's uh she's like a more extreme version of Ting. She looks like if you took Ting, a uh, structured show dog and uh bred more extreme trade, uh like you know, add King Koopas and that. Uh Vanna White, really nice female, uh off of Ting. Uh more extreme than Ting, bed. I uh, really liked her a lot. Uh Swizz, our chair, she one of the most females to this day i've i've seen i've never seen a more extreme uh female uh at pocket height uh, she was she was massive so yeah those a couple of uh a couple of my favorite uh, another one i really like xena xena was beautiful uh she's maestro to a venom daughter uh so yeah i would say uh a couple of oh fury uh, Doghouse Bullies O's champion named Fury off of Venom's first. Uh, really nice pocket. Feet. I like her a lot. Really pretty, uh, you know, short, compact, and and very well, you know, nice structure. I think. Uh, got a couple wins towards Grand Champ, but I believe they stopped at Champion. It's, I'll tell you what, it's, you know, honestly, Champion is. You show up at enough shows, you got a decent dog, you can get there. You know what I mean? But Grand is another, that's a whole nother level. Yeah. That whole, that ring is full of excellent examples. Yeah. And it just makes it so much harder. Uh, Mega Line Bullies, oh, level. Know oh, how much level. actually weighs. How uh, much Koopa weighs right now? He was a little mm -hmm. underweight. Uh, when I got him, uh, we just had him wait at the vet the other day. He was at 75. Uh, the heaviest he got up to, he was uh, he was two. Uh, last I had him, me. Mega line bullies. Let's see what he says. I got because Oh, okay. <laughs> you want me to Omega. grab him? Who's oh, that? He's right. Yeah. Yeah. Go grab him. Koopa. Yeah, we're gonna check uh, him out. Yeah, he's just chilling inside. Yeah. Koopa. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. Just give you guys a heads up. He does have a breeding at eight o'clock, so we're gonna let him bounce at eight o'clock. Uh, normally, you know, we probably run a couple of hours. But in this situation, he's got some stuff he's got to do. So, oh, see him? Yep. Uh, say what up, Koopa? Uh. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dog. Uh, you can tell. Yeah, so that's uh, that's Koopa. Right. Nice. He'll probably chill outside with us for a minute. Yeah. So probably inbred... not the best on on uh, 
on live, but bread venom. Uh, tell you he would be Ting's litter mate. He's not off the. Uh, technically, he would be he's Lil Ting's litter mate, uh, Venom and Moana, but King Koopa came off the repeat, so they're litter mates, but not technically because two different. Uh, it's a repeat breeding. Right. Okay. Now, Big Mouth Bullies wanted to know what do you feed or do you feed raw. Uh, I used to uh, until we got a bad batch uh, and we had uh, explosions all over the house. I came home. My wife is literally crying, like scraping shit off the walls. Uh, we got a bad batch from Miami since then. Uh, the only raw that I feed them is the dehydrated raw nuggets. Uh, there's a uh, uh, two comp. There's Stella and Chewy's is like the pet smart version, but there's a, uh, another company called Barf, uh, B-A-R-F. And it stands for biologically appropriate something, uh, biologically appropriate raw food. I um, mean, they have these nuggets that, that I'll top the food with. Um, and you get the same benefits with raw. It's cold compress, so supposedly it stores all the nutrients and uh, you can feed it dry rather than, uh, you know, the raw food. Because if you do get a bad batch, uh, it's not pretty. Right. You, for sure. For sure. Now, you... Uh... You don't have like you don't have a big giant kennel like your dogs are or your no. dogs your house dogs they're your your family dogs. Part, so, they're part of our family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't we don't use a kennel setup. If I ever did get big enough, uh, dog wise, um, I would rotate them. But I couldn't see myself leaving the dogs in a kennel. Uh, they're part of the family, and uh, if you treat them that way, it just it goes a lot. Uh, it goes a long ways in their temperament. Um, you know, you treat them right. Don't keep them locked up 23 hours a day, uh, and make them part of the family and your customers will, will get better dogs and they'll get happier dogs. Um, because I, I do I think some of that stuff is down, you know, unhappy dogs produce more unhappy dogs, treat them good. Yeah. So you keep, uh, who all you're keeping in? You got Koopa, uh, King V, Ting. Uh, the yeah, I've got King Koopa, King Koopa, Uno, King V, uh, Champion Ting, Champion Lucci, uh, our big boy Tyson, Tyson the Second, the Standard, uh, uh, the Rock, he's Rock and Ruby Blood off of uh, uh, the Mo Better Pits. Uh, Rocky has a hard head. Uh, he's a grandson off of him. Uh, so he's he's eleven now. He's oh. the old house. The old man. Yeah. Yeah, I got him before I even, you know, thought about about breeding. He was just, an, you know, an awesome dog. And uh, at, at the time, I had just given up drugs and alcohol. So I got sober. Uh, and my wife had told me if I stayed sober for a year, she'd love me get a bully. And that that was like a big driving force the first year. I just really wanted this uh, this bully. And that that's Tyson. Uh, he's still the old man. And uh you know, he's been sleeping with uh, with our son, Christian, and uh, he sleeps with my wife every night. Uh, it's awesome. Awesome dog. Yeah, Megaline said, don't let Ting out too late. There's too many lizards out there. He's wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she's out here flipping bricks with her nose. She's yeah. just obsessed with lizards. She knows where they hide, where they go. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, she's a female. Yeah. She's everybody. Uh, at the door, first thing, and every dog bows down to her at this house. So she runs the show. Yeah. Well, trust me, Kimber is the exact same dog. Like she is. No, no dog is safe from her. If you start shit with her, you're gonna have a problem. Oh, okay. Kimber's like that. Yeah, males, females. She doesn't give a shit. She will not take shit off no one. That's, That's how she what she is. And it's the weirdest thing, too, because you met Chunk. Chunk's like the most laid-back dog ever. He didn't want to do anything but get carried to where he wants to go, yep. get comfortable, and have a pillow because that was his thing. He just wanted to cuddle up next to me. But, uh, yeah, he wasn't uh, he wasn't super active or, or hyper or anything, just a mellow, mellow, uh, really, really cool dog, man. Yeah, Kimber's had so wide. Well, you know, I got to one point where I was like, I just need to wear her out. Apparently, um, you know, we're just not letting her 
run enough so she gets you no know, so one day i let her go and we have chickens out back and a giant chicken coop giant and she loved to run around that chicken coop she would just run around it and around it and around it and the chickens aren't scared of her because they know that she can't get to them right so I'm, I'm just gonna let her go i'm just gonna let her run and then <laughs> she's finally wore out she'll come back in the house so it was like a half hour and I go out there and all the grass all the way around the chicken coops tore up and she is still flying around that thing. Like she just had so <laughs> much. That's, like, uh, that's funny. Man. That's, that's funny, man. That's why we ended up actually getting the RC cars was for uh, uh, give Ting and King V a way to burn off some of that energy. Yeah. And then that, uh, go ahead. I'll say that was one of the things that, um, as far as marketing goes, I mean, I don't think, I think anybody that ever saw one of those videos knew, like, a, a few people started doing it after you did, but you guys seemed to do that pretty consistently. It was like the GoPro backwards on the remote control car and the dogs like chasing down the remote control car. And yeah. And the cool thing about it is, uh, when the, the GoPro is that low, it's the perfect angle. Everyone, they're so short. If you really want to appreciate, you know what they had to offer you need to get down low and that camera did that uh we kind of happened on that accidentally nate and i were throwing ideas around and uh i think i threw out why don't we attach a gopro to this thing and we tried it and we watched the video and we're like oh wow that actually looks really cool yeah because you can funny. slow down and uh you know that that way even, even doing something like that that's fun uh we had a blast doing it uh, but your customers appreciate that because very few kennels are putting out videos of, of their dogs moving, especially now that everyone wants a more extreme dog. Uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the stud owners, they'll, they'll put out one or two photos of the dog ever. Uh, and it's getting to the point that isn't cutting it like it, like it used to. And now it's changing and people want to see the dog in person or see okay. videos uh, you're doing a great job, uh, you know, out at shows with seven winning stack offs, but you're doing it in person where people can see the dog for what it is, yep. uh, you know, yeah. and appreciate it rather than buying off a photo, uh, like a lot of people do. And then they're upset, you know, when they, when, when the litter doesn't turn out, it's like, okay, you bought off a of Photoshop stud. They, they are going to pass on what they carry, not what their Photoshop, you know, to look like, uh, and I think a lot of these new guys were skating with that for a while, but people have woken up to it uh, and people want to see the dogs. You know, if you're not showing ABKC, it doesn't matter. It can be another show. Yeah. Uh, show up. People just want to see the dogs get out. Uh, and that was one of the things you and Jeremiah got me excited again when Jeremiah, uh, you know, came on and said, Hey, we'd love to see Venom line at this event. And I was like, Oh shit. Someone has something nice to say. Cause normally you do this for eight years. You deal with, you know, other breeders attacking your brand. We've had people take down our website. Uh, we've had bogus reviews posted. All the things that happen uh, can make you kind of calloused. Uh, just, you know, so many people trying to get a bad photo of your dog um, or some of the craziest shit that I've seen people uh, try to poison a dog at a show. Um, if a few years back, it was an XL. Uh, I'm not going to mention it. I don't want to say anything like that, but uh, things like that, man, it, it makes you weary of people because when you do make a name and establish your brand, uh, you know, the, the breeders aren't putting in the same amount of work to market and doing the videos and getting to shows. Uh, they're not happy about it because they want to sit back and post the same photo and recycle it 30 times and collect the stud piece. But, you know, it's changed. People are waking up. They want to see real dogs, and, and the way to do that is either traveling to the stud owner, seeing the dog in person, or uh, uh, getting back out to shows. And that includes myself. I haven't been to a show in probably four years. Uh, so that was my goal this year was uh, to just start back fresh. Like no one knows anything about Venom Line or any of the breedings, and just to grind this entire year. Uh, like I don't have a cent to my name and no one's ever heard of our line. Um, and at the end of the day, that's all I, I mean, I think that's all what any breeder really wants is just to be respected for their work. 
Um, I don't have any desire to be fame, uh, famous. You know, I don't put myself on flyers. It's actually the first flyer I've ever been on is, uh, for this show. Yeah. Uh, I want to be strictly about the dogs. Um, so I, I try to stay out of the picture as much as possible, make it strictly about the dogs. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's what, what people want to see anyways, you know, not, not, you know, my face on everything. They want to see the dogs. Yeah. I have to say, I had to go pretty deep in your photos to find that photo of you. I'm like, this guy <laughs> never, he never posts a photo of himself. I'm like going down through. I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know how old that photo is, but it's pretty old. Cause I had to dig way down in the list. It was nuts. I, I, I want, I want to stay in the background. I want the dogs to be in the forefront. I don't want people talking about me. I want them talking about uh, our dogs and, and hopefully it's good things, you yeah, know, cause for sure. Uh, you know, we, we put a lot of work in over the years and uh, uh, we, we produced some, some really nice dogs I'm proud of. And, uh, just like yourself, man, I think, uh, what a lot of, uh, what I'd like to see more of is a lot of, a lot of the newer breeders that come in, uh, we welcome everyone. Uh, don't think that, uh, you know, someone's against you because they've been a little around longer. Um, I, I want to see these guys succeed. I just want to see the new guys show a little bit more respect to the guys that have been around before them. Uh, because that's what we tried to do. You'll never hear me say anything negative about, uh, the guys I respect, the Robert Lees, the Alex Ferraros, the ones that uh, were doing it before me and the ones before them, you know, Fabian with Remy Line, Marco Suarez, guys that have been uh, breeding 20 years. Uh, I think that we should respect them at all times. And I think this newer crowd, uh, you know, I want these guys to come in and enjoy this breed, but just show a little respect to the guys that paved the way. Like we try to show respect to the guys – uh, that paved the way before us because without them, you know, we wouldn't have the palette to work with. We, we would not have anything. Uh, so I always try to give respect to the ones that came before us. And I think if the community could just do that as a whole is try to show more respect. I mean, yeah, there's competition. Everybody wants the best dog, but at the end of the day, uh, I think most of us are just trying to leave a legacy or, you know, produce a special dog and uh, be respected for our work. And, uh, that's what we try to show everyone, uh, you know, in return. Absolutely. Yeah. You had mentioned something about, you know, how things have changed a little bit and you really can't, you can't kind of just put a photo out these days and, and expect the dog to go nuts. And, you know, a lot of that was a lot of in the past, there was a lot of studs that came out and maybe they weren't perfect, even though they brought a lot to the table, they weren't perfect. Mm -hmm. So, they took photos and they posted them and they, you know, they just kind of left that and they let the production speak for the dog. That way they didn't have to deal with the people trying to tear them apart when they saw the dog. Oops. Today, I feel like your clients are a little more educated. They, they a little more understanding what a tool is, you know what I mean? And you can bring a big massive dog out or you can bring a super clean dog out mm -hmm. and they can look at that dog and say, okay, this dog is a tool to do this. If I have a female that's overdone, here's this male and he's super clean or vice versa. Absolutely. You know? So it's part nowadays, it's bring the dog out. It's regardless of whatever it is you think everyone's going to hate you for about that dog. Doesn't matter. You bring him out because most of everyone's going to love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have the, the ones that hate and, uh, but then you're going to have, you know, it surprises you, man. And it happened with, when I lost Venom, that was one of the things that got me fired up to come back again is I didn't read any of the messages for probably two months. Uh, and then one day I, uh, uh, you know, I, I waited till my wife and, and Christian were gone. Uh, and, and I broke down then. Uh, but I, I couldn't do it until my wife and, and Christian left the house for whatever reason. Uh, but I, I went through and, you know, I broke down and, uh, you know, had a, had a moment where, you know, I was, I, I grieved him. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was tough, man. My, my thoughts and, uh, yeah, I feel for Sam, uh, you know, and going through the same thing right now. So, uh, and, and Sam's a good dude, nothing but love for, for Sam. If you're watching this buddy, what's up, man? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a process, um, that you just have to deal with. You can't, you know, you can't like try to bury it and continue business as usual. You know, you just, you're going to have to deal with it. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people don't, you know, 
there's a there's a lot of dogs that people think are still around that are have been gone for for a while man i just think when the dog passes you have an obligation to let the people who have followed and been a part of your journey that love that dog uh you owe it to them to to be honest and you owe it to your customers you know to to let them know that this stud's no longer here i see a lot of stud owners they fall into issue because you know something happens to the stud things do happen uh, but they don't address it. And, you know, people, in my experience, will, will only get upset to you if you're lying or leading them on. If you're honest with people, they, they, they respect that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, that's and that's good. Uh, you know, the last few uh, months or weeks or whatever it has been, I'm starting to see you like posting every day again and like always get notifications. Matt posted here. Matt posted here. I'm like, all right, he's fired up again. Um your podcast when when you uh, got on uh and you had said some nice things and jeremiah got on and uh was basically like hey man like quit laying back bring it bring the dogs out like we want to see you and i was like oh shit okay like because sometimes you can you deal with enough hate and the people attacking it's, it's always other breeders uh but it, it weighs on you and i've talked to other you know stud owners i mean you're going to experience this if you haven't already too you know uh it weighs on you and uh especially when you lose a dog and you're, you're dealing with that you know on top of it but you still have you know you still have to get back to your clients it's not always easy uh mm-hmm. because i i just wanted to be left alone for a couple of months and uh you know i i thought about you know being done and hanging it up but uh i just needed time off and and to mourn uh to mourn chunk and uh yeah i just needed time off to to get that spark back and uh i got it back and i'm i'm locked in and you know we're, we're focused on producing the best possible dogs we can this year and uh make you know making a lot of noise for you know our customers as well and bringing up their stock yeah absolutely i think that's awesome i think it's awesome yeah i was uh we got a question here i asked nate about this when he was on so i imagine your answer to this question is going to be very similar but someone posted, can you all talk about the Merle? What Matt's perspective and yours is on the Merle? Seemingly taboo to some breeders. Uh, no, great question. Um, me personally, uh, I don't breed to any Merle dogs um, or any dogs with Merle in the pedigree. Uh, so anytime I get a text, you know, I'm interested in King Koopa, I'm interested in homicide, and I ask for uh, photos in the pedigree, of the female to approve, chill out, Koopa. Uh, and, and there's Merle dogs. Uh, we say no. um, and it's not that I have anything against Merle dogs or breeders. If that's what you're into, you know, do your thing. Uh, just me personally with our line, um, I didn't want that. Uh, I didn't want that mixed in. Yeah. Understandable. And if, if, if you want to know the reasoning behind that, it's because, okay, you do a Merle breeding. First, Merle breeding is gorgeous. Anyone who's telling you different, differently is lying to you. Uh, but eventually, you're going to have to bring that Merle dog back into the ped to get the colors that you want, or you're going to end up with a bunch of black and gray spotted dogs that no one wants. I've said this several times, and every three or four years, I see it happen all over again. Uh, so it, it, me personally, I avoid it. Uh, if you do like it and you're not concerned with you know double Merles or any of that sort of thing, um, or even with other types of bulldogs. I mean, there's other types of, uh, of dogs where Merle's not an issue. Me personally, with the American Bully, I don't think it belongs there. Uh, for our line, we avoid it. Good answer. Good answer. Let me see here. That's what love, Matt. To the breed. Jennifer Church is on here. Says, nothing but love and respect for you, Matt. You brought a lot of people into the breed with who and how you are. Hats off. Can't wait to see wow. you in the show scene. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, sir. You think the best for you, sir. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we know we got to let you go soon. We're going to throw a couple more questions in here. Uh, Matt, in your opinion, do you think the best producer at Venom Line is? Active studs, active and retired studs. Just active. Uh, active studs, King Koopa, Homicide, those two. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, 
I actually have a lock in for homicide. Nate was giving me shit because I haven't used it yet. <laughs> I'm like, you know how it is with these females. I'm like, damn it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I, I love homies producing. Uh, yeah. I love homie and I, I love Koopa. Those are, uh, uh, we're going to be using a lot of those two this year. Yeah. I, I got to be honest. When Nate showed up at the show and he was like, yeah, we, you know, we bought homicide. I was like, I'm a little jealous, to be honest with you. I didn't even know he was for sale. <laughs> I'm like, he's a nice dog. I've always liked him. I loved him from a puppy, man. I, uh, you know, I had locked him as a stud before we ever we ever had a chance to, to buy him. Uh, so uh, yeah, we were definitely blessed with that opportunity, and it came along right at the right at the right time because he's similar to the type of dog that we like. You know, he's short, he's compact, short back, uh, but still has the extreme features, uh, and he's got it on a show frame. So, uh, you know, you can't ask for too much more. That's right. That's right. Well, it is after eight, and we promised we'd let you go. I know you got a breeding, um, but we would definitely probably reach out to you again and have you come on again now that you got your first show jitters out. Yeah, man. And, uh, we might have you come back on again, and we'll have another conversation. But for now, we know you got a breeding coming up here in a few minutes. So we're going to let you go. But I appreciate you coming on. Obviously, it's great to see you back, back at it. Thank you, man. I appreciate I look forward that. to seeing you at the shows. And I've been seeing you do your thing, man. While I've been out, you've been uh, you've been killing it, brother. So uh, respect, man. Um, you know, I appreciate you acknowledging me earlier. I got to acknowledge you and say uh, respect what you're doing, man. You're doing exactly right, and I, uh, yeah, I love what you're producing, man. That's all. I appreciate it, brother. All right, guys. We'll see you next time and uh, next week. Later.